Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, now it's now the time to talk about uh, Canada Lithium uh, with uh, Mr. Charles Tashro, which is a COO, Chief uh, Operating Officer. Uh, good day, Mr. Tashro. Good day. Uh, we're very happy to have you here because, uh, as you see, a lot of people, uh, a lot of our viewers own your share, and there might be some, a potential for some more right there. <laughs> I'm very glad to be here. It's nice to <laughs> have so many shareholders listening. Thank you. Yes, yeah. we know since a long time because we asked this question uh, uh, weeks and weeks before and we were surprised to see how many people. But, you know, I, I think you have a success story around. Oh, uh, you know, it's a, in Quebec, we like things that come from here and, uh, mm -hmm. and this is amazing. A new market and yeah. uh, we, we do have a mine here. There are not uh, tons of mines like that everywhere in, in, in the world. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. So I want to know a little bit about that right now. Let's let's talk about the production. Is uh, we know that it's going to increase. It must increase. But right now, uh, do do we pro do we produce more or less than the market need? Well, it's always a good question. People look at. It's hard to answer. But maybe the way I'll put it is: if you look currently, the production cost for lithium carbonate, was the main product we'll produce, is a range of twenty-two hundred to three thousand. And the sale price about fifty-eight hundred to six thousand dollars a ton, so it's a pretty big margin. It's probably even more than gold currently if you look at the production cost or the market cost. So you can tell it's no currently overproduction, uh -huh. and there's going to be it an would increase. make the price go down. Exactly, why well, the price would get very close to the production cost if there would be overproduction, just normal market rules. And there will be an increase in production. Let's say there's one mine that just got in production in Australia. We will be the next to come online. There's a few expansions on ongoing and current production sites. But the demand is planned to increase much more. Let's say if you look at the market analysts looking at the lithium, uh, the projections are looking at probably about 5 to 10 percent of all cars worldwide that would be hybrids or electrical by 2020. So which would mean the increase of lithium production will be to multiply by 5 or by 10, talking 1,000 percent increase in world production. <laughs> so it's a lot of new mines and expansions. And 2020 could look far, but if you look at the time it takes to develop a mining project, that's tomorrow. That's very, very close. Exactly, exactly. There are so many things to do. Uh, you have to find the area that, it, that, that could contains this. You have to dig, you have to do prospection, and then uh, they, just to, even when, when you found it, uh, to become to the point that you can exploit it, it, it it's so long. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think in Canada they say that from exploration to production, the average pe mines that do success, it's about 11 years right now. 11 so years? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so I don't think it's going to be so long. No, no. In our case, it's much faster. Because you have an open pit uh, solution. There. Exactly. Well, we just finished feasibility detail, feasibility study, bankable feasibility study, finished in December. Very positive. So now we're doing the detail engineering with uh, Geneva and Medchem, planning to start construction in May. So now we have uh, two thirds of the money in the bank. The other third is coming. Uh, permitting is going well, so what we're planning to do, starting on the ground in May, finish the construction, or be beginning of the last quarter next year, start commissioning of the plant and be in full production 2013. So I, I, I would put you uh, as, uh, as, 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 as popular as Osisco in this area there, because uh, you seems to be two of the, the most interesting yeah, things. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's a smaller scale, talking about 200 million smaller investment, yes, yes, yes. but it's something new, and yeah, I think in Abitibi, I've heard that many times. That's one, we're one of the project, probably the project right now, there's both been talking about and the mining development in Quebec. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so I presume the, this old mine, 1965 to uh, 55 to 65, has been abandoned because no one ever talked we were going to have cars running with batteries. Yeah, exactly. It was other Not because there was the no more resources there. No, no, the resources are, are huge. Let's say we're working right now, the development is on 1 million tons per year processing, but less than 3,000 tons per day, with 15 million tons reserve, so about 15 years. However, if we look at was is not confirmed in geology, we're talking about inferred uh, resources that, let's say, we, we touch them, there's ore there, but we have to do more drilling to confirm it. There's a potential for over 100 million tons and more because it's, we still didn't go at depth and on strike. So the ore body is not the limiting factor in our case. If lithium demand is there and the increase, uh, we could be very quickly into expansion mode and increase the production and to, to get a bigger share of the market. 
But you expect uh, to uh, produce 20,000 tons by 2012. So this is, this is exactly. uh, to almost tomorrow. Be, well, let's say that will be the production rate, but within 2013 we'll get that total. But yeah, and that, that yeah. would represent with the projections right now, the current world production and the expansion and, and our getting in production will be about 12% of the world production by beginning or end of 2012. And will make us about the fourth player into the lithium worldwide market. And uh, is there any environmental issues there with this type of mining? You're well, that's to one do? of the things is very nice with lithium is because it's um, let's say the metal itself is very very low toxicity. Let's say we compare it with salt, so table salt usually has kind of uh -huh. level of toxicity. And the, the ore itself, there's no sulfide, so there is no potential for acid mine drainage, which is a big crime for some. Also, for the processing, we don't need cyanide, things like that. Like no for problem with, con for with con go contamination, uh, in exactly. the water. Exactly. But let's say we're putting very high standard. Uh, we want to make sure that there is nothing that we're missing and nothing happening on that. But starting with, it's a very clean ore. Uh -huh. Basically, what will go into the tailings pond is quartz, it's beach sand. There's already the old tailings that's there from the 50s and 60s, and we did all the baseline, the environmental baseline. We can see there, there's no pollution, even if the standard then was not at all what we're building now as tailings and containment. We, we have a picture of how a, an open pit could uh, would look like here, and uh, it's a very small scale on the screen, but uh, it, it, uh, how, how big, how wide could okay. be that uh, hole whenever you do it? For, for, no, for mine, it's pretty small. We're talking about 150 meters deep. 500 at the end after 15 years yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 meters wide by about 800 meters long so have a, a half a kilometer yeah about approximately yeah. so it's about 20 times smaller than a Cisco for example if we compare uh -huh. could be a nice lake after yeah, well exactly <laughs> and we're in an area where the water table is very high so when it will stop pumping that that's in the restoration plan we already have a restoration plan in place planning after 15 years yes. there will be all the money put aside probably half of it before even the end of construction the other half during the first year I, it's quite flat in Abitibi and uh, there's lots of water there uh, so exactly. I presume whenever so you when we start, start pumping, digging there will be water pouring oh inside yeah, that's so you would have to pump it all the time eh? yeah well, it's not a huge amount but yeah you have to pump it and that's the water we'll use actually also on the environmental side we reuse all the time the same water it's a closed loop so we use the water in the tailing spawn for the process so there's very very low amount it's close to 95% to recirculation over 92 percent and a little bit from underground for the, the potable water and the knees and clean water but talking about the ba car batteries uh, every country wants to increase the, the proportion of electric car versus the uh, uh, gasoline mm -hmm. cars in their country and uh, they're, 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 they're all focusing on it and they're, they're not talking about hundreds they're talking about millions uh, one million battery is a lot so tell, tell us what how, how much lithium we, uh, there is in an average battery car. I know there's a different size, oh, exactly. but an average. It's varying a bit depending if it's an hybrid, a full electrical, on the side of the car. Yeah. But the range we can talk about is probably from about 12 kgs for a small hybrid to over 40 kgs for a bigger car, uh, fully uh, electrical. Uh, what is Half it? Lithium. Kilograms. Kilograms. Kilogram. <laughs> Sorry. Half lithium. Okay. But I obviously, know, yeah. lithium is only a small part, maybe 10% of the total. So that's quite enough. Uh, that's quite a big. Uh, that's quite big. Well, if we you multiply that by 10, a million 10 cars. 10 to 20 uh, kilos is, for, is 20 to 40 pounds uh, per battery, and we're talking about millions of yeah, battery exactly. cars. And so if you look that's right now. Of, uh, uh, of, of, of uranium, of pure uh, uh, lithium. uranium, <laughs> lithium. And, then, and we're not talking about rocks there. We're talking yeah. about lithium there. Yeah, current lithium. If you look at uh, also the current lithium market, right now, still most of the demand is the traditional demand in metallurgy, special glass, special ceramics, for almost two-thirds of the market. Two-thirds already, yeah. yeah. And one-third is on batteries. But right now, it's mostly uh, cell phone batteries, uh, power tools, laptops, things like that. The cars demand in, ba in lithium batteries is just starting. It's not even in there, yeah. Uh, just a few models. But it, all the new ones coming online now, it's lithium. So it should be about uh, close 25 car models uh, next year in 2012 on sale so have been announced with expert, lithium. So according to expert, what's the, uh, uh, how looks the trend for the next few years in, in the lithium demand? Well, that's what I talked earlier. We're talking about, let's say, what the expert look is to have 5 or 10% of the cars worldwide that would be or hybrid or electrical by 2020, which would require the production, worldwide production of lithium to be multiplied by 10 by between now by and then. By 10, yeah. the, the actual production. So this, this live, leaves quite a bit of room uh, for, and uh, we know that uh, the, um, uh, the, the this company here, um, uh, w w 
what, what, what's the name? Uh, the, the, the biggest producer right now is producing 90%. Uh, uh, that's Talisan? Yeah, but yeah, Talisan is producing spodumene mainly, which is the mineral that contains Elysium, okay. and sell mainly for usage into about glass and ceramics and things like they that. They don't refine it? Not uh, in Australia. They sell some to China, and China do some refining of it. But okay. the big of the production of lithium carbonate right now is from South America. So you would be run one of the rare to to actually refine the, the yep. product and get get it get exactly. the real and potential selling boat. And we're already doing some tests and uh, lab tests right now and soon pilot plant tests to do other products. If the demand goes for lithium hydroxide with an lithium metal, want to be ready then to be able to offer the customers. So if you start like. an actual mi a, a mine and start producing a lot of it and you want to ref to process it and refine it, and uh, is that mean that there could be a construction of a, of a, of a, a shop or a big museum? Well, already as a part of the construction, we're talking about 200 millions to build a mine. Most of it is not the mine. It's actually the plant to the, the plant. processing. Two-thirds of the amount, of about 230 million, is for the plant oh. for transforming from the ore into spodumene, the first step, and then into lithium carbonate. Okay, so there's a lot of, a lot of employment again in there. Yeah, I'm talking about close to 200 uh, jobs full-time on-site mm. that will be created with the Good. project. Good, I like to hear that in this, in this uh, uh, part of, uh, of uh, Quebec. Uh, and uh, uh, we don't have uh, much more, uh, a lot more time uh, to, to go, but uh, I have uh, some uh, other questions uh, about uh, the stock itself. As the uh, chief operation officer, uh, you, you're you're doing the operation, but uh, anyone in 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 a company like that are really usually interested on how what the price is worth of the day uh, today on the stock. Uh, are you keeping an eye on? Obviously, it keep an eye on it and looking what's happening. On it. And and here, you know, we talk a lot about technical analysis, mm -hmm. movements, and everything. And so many times we see the stock going all over the place, and there's no news on it. It comes later, or, or sometimes it comes before, mm -hmm. and has no effect. No effect at first because there are there's lots of institutional movement and sometimes just the trader makes something mm -hmm. going up and it, there's not really a good reason even today the stock went up because we spoke about it so uh, and you won't issue any special news on on the tape and uh, but you always know when the stock makes a big movement why well, maybe the big movements the small movements I, I think it was beautiful with the market nobody really knows so many yeah. factor However, I think right now what we've seen is but there's been a good increase when we announced the end of the feasibility study. It was positive, and basically with it that we were planning to go ahead with construction and production. After that's been a bit adjustment. Obviously, there's been some dilution with uh, the new shares on the market. And uh, now it's probably will be what we can expect, some stabilization. And after that, when the next good news will come, uh, start of construction and the permitting and uh, the, those different as things. Far as far uh, as I uh, as I see things going, I, I think you could be a, a potential takeover target from a bigger company. There, uh, you, you don't have any plan. You haven't got any uh, that's offer not, yet. That's uh, not no. It's not the plan. Let's say we're looking to develop the mine to be a producer and to increase our share to be a big one. However, as you know, in the mining market, uh, nobody knows the future. But. Uh, for me, <laughs> as long as you keep selling the, 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 the final product to the Chinese, I'm glad with it. As long as you don't sell these companies we got that we consider our own, <laughs> not only yours. Well, as long as the we have people <laughs> consider their stuff as their own. <laughs> as long as we have shareholders interested here and we can finance here, obviously, uh, yeah, you stays know, in Canada. We'll be there. We'll still <laughs> help you in that. I uh, have no problem with that. So we really thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Tashiro, for being here today. Today we were very pleased with your uh, interview. Merci, Mr. Kang. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs>